a big crowd. This is one hell of a big crowd. Well, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Gastonia, Gastonia. Thank you to Gastonia. Beautiful name. 13 days, can you believe it? 13 days. 13 days from now, and you see what's going on. You see, yum, boom, boom, boom. Oh, they're getting a little nervous over there, you know, the deep state, the Democrats. All of these people that we've been dealing with, they're getting a little bit nervous, aren't they, huh? We're going to win this state, 13 days. This great, great state. And we're going to win four more years in the White House. With your vote, we will continue to cut taxes, cut regulations, lower drug prices like never before, support our great police and law enforcement, protect your incredible Second Amendment, defend our borders, maintain energy independence, and ensure more products are proudly stamped with the phrase, made in the USA. And it's happening now. We will deliver record prosperity, epic job growth, a very safe vaccine that's coming very quickly. That pandemic is rounding the corner. They hate it when I say it. You know, you turn on to this MSDNC and fake news CNN, all you hear is COVID, 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 COVID. That's all they put on because they want to scare the hell out of everyone. And you know, the more testing you have, the more cases. They say cases are up. Yeah, testing is up. We have more testing than India, China, and almost every other country put together. You could say it's ridiculous. At the same time, we did a good job, but it shows a lot of cases. And that's, thank you. He's a great job. We did do a great job. Normal life will fully resume. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. That's where we're at it. This election is a choice between a Trump super recovery or a Biden steep depression. And that's what you're going to have. It's between a Trump boom or a Biden lockdown. He wants to lock you down, you know? By the way, by the way, I love this state. You got to get your governor to open up your state here. Got to get him to open up. Open up your state, Governor. It's time. You've been long enough. Watch, November 4th, North Carolina, we're opening up. November 4th. You know, they're only doing this for political reasons. Many, many states, big, big, powerful states, they're open, they're doing great. But your governor doesn't want to, and you look at Michigan. Now, Michigan, we won in the Supreme Court. She had no constitutional right to do what she did. The only one that had freedom in Michigan was her husband. He had plenty of freedom. He went swimming and he went boating whenever he wanted. Biden will delay therapies, postpone the vaccine, prolong the pandemic, close your schools and shut down our country. And that's what he'll do. He will massively raise your taxes. He won't even know he's doing it, by the way, but let's go into it. He has no clue, but that's all right. Bury you in regulations, dismantle your police departments, dissolve our borders, confiscate your guns. That would be happening very quickly. Eliminate private health care, 180 million people. Private health care, they love it. They want to eliminate it. They want to go to socialized medicine. You too can go to a hospital ward and see how your cold is coming along. Wait for four or five days before you get in. Terminate religious liberty. Destroy the suburbs and slash defense spending. Devastating North Carolina's incredible military families. By the way, 
We've invested more in the military in the last three years than at any time in our nation's history. All made in the USA. Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain in exchange for his party's nomination, which he should have never gotten. If Pocahontas got out two days early instead of what she did to Crazy Bernie was unbelievable because they split up the crazy vote. And that vote doesn't like Kim very much. I don't know, you know, he's, they're not doing so well. You know, people like aren't showing up. I shouldn't say this, it's too early, right? Oh, there they are. 61 from North Carolina, some of the great women of the world. 61 times, oh. Oh, look at you. And you have your husbands with you tonight. Look at you. Look at you. Good. <laughs> Good. Now, I asked them last time, how many times have you gone? 61. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, too. All right, so don't explain. Thank you. That's so nice. I said the other night, you're going to make me cry. And you know what? One of these fake anchors said, Donald Trump started crying during his speech. No, I didn't. I thought that that's a bad thing. In fact, it would probably good, maybe it would be good if I did. You know, some people say, hey, why don't you do that every once in a while? It wouldn't be so bad. No, the other thing they said, fake, fake people. I joke and I say, Women of the suburbs, please, please, love me. I've done so good. No. I've done so good. I've done so good for you. Please, just like this. You know, we're kidding. I mean, I'm being sarcastic. Please, but I mean it. Because I'm saving you suburbs. I'm going to stop low-income housing. I'm going to stop projects. And we're going to stop crime from going into the suburbs. So I mean it. But I said, I said, jokingly, the last time out, last time out, I said, women of the suburbs, please, please, love me. I've done such a good job, please. No. And on 60 Minutes, fake 60 Minutes, she said, you are begging for women to love you. You said, women, please love you. You'll see. You'll see. Wait till you see. We have a little surprise for 60 Minutes. No, it's true. No, it's true. I won't name the anchor. Do you know the anchor? Huh? So, no, she said, uh, well, you, you were begging for women to love you. I said, no, no. That was sarcastic. That was, remember, I said, Russia, 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 if you're listening, please give us whatever it was, Hillary's emails or whatever. And then everybody laughed and I laughed, but they cut me off just before the end. And they said, he was asking Russia for help. These people are sick. Shifty Schiff and all that group, they are sick people. So you see, from now on, when I say, women of the suburbs, please love me, I'm going to have to say, I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding, because otherwise. But they'll take that out, too. Sleepy Joe Biden has handed control of his party over to socialist, communist, Marxists, and left-wing extremists. And they're filled with hatred, venom, and rage. The first thing Washington Democrats will do if Sleepy Joe is elected is go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> you know, I had a leader that called me, a really dynamic leader called me up about two weeks ago and said, I don't want to deal with him. He's always going to be sleeping. Can you imagine that? <laughs> the word gets around. But the first thing Washington Democrats will do if Biden gets elected is pack the Supreme Court with radical left judges who will eliminate your Second Amendment and many other things. Life, life. Look at the things they have to rule on. They will pack it. Somebody said 16. I said, why not 18? Why not 20? Why not 22? And he's got to also tell us who the judges are. He won't tell. He won't talk because if he does, he's going to totally lose the radical left. So he won't say. He's in his basement. You're right about that. No, I go through these interviews, every question's a total kill, right? Every question, they're going for the kill. And this guy walks out holding ice cream. And the press is out there, the fake news, and they're going, what kind of ice cream are you eating? Uh, 
Uh, chocolate, I think, and vanilla too. Huh? I say, why don't they ever ask me those questions, right? They don't ask me those questions. If Biden wins, the flag-burning demonstrators on the street will be running your federal government. Don't worry, it's not going to happen. It can't happen. You know my statement? Our country will never be a socialist country. Never, ever, ever. They'll decide which businesses can exist and which will be outlawed. They will decide which rights you can keep and which are going to be revoked. They will re-educate your children, which they tried and we stopped, but they will do it. You saw what I did with the people that wanted to sort of do a culture change, right? They were all gone out of our military. They're gone out of everything. But they'll reemerge. If you have the wrong leader, they'll, they'll reemerge quickly. They'll order you to stay at home while letting rioters and MS-13 killers roam free without masks. Without masks. MS-13 doesn't have to wear a mask. You ever see that? They riot, they loot, they do everything, no problem. You get together, you get together. That's why we have outdoors. We always go outdoors, right? But they have a thing, you can't do anything. You can't go to church, right? You can't go to church. Your kids can't go to school, even if so it's 99.9%, 99.9. In fact, you know, Barron had it. Sir, he just tested positive. Who, Barron? Oh, like about... 12 seconds later, how's he doing? Oh, he's recovered. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> Let's face it, they have stronger immune systems. Stronger immune, they're very powerful. I never realized how powerful children are. They will censor you, punish you, and persecute you for violating their speech codes and oppressive mandates. You've seen it, you've been seeing what's going on. But you know what? We've got the White House, we're winning, that's it. And as long as we have that. And we're knocking them out left and right. I wonder what's going to happen. We win, they announce, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has won the presidency of the United States. I think they'll be very happy. I think they'll be happy. They're going to be very happy. No, they'll be upset, and then they'll be just fine, right? They'll be just fine. They'll be very thrilled. They'll be thrilled. I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. You know, I don't want to, I love this particular state, but I might not have come here so often. I've been all over your state, you better let me win. I mean, I mean, Laura and Eric, we had a beautiful, they had a beautiful daughter, granddaughter for me. And uh, they named the granddaughter Carolina. Now, when I go to South Carolina, I could also give them some credit, right? Kind of, you mind? Right. No, it's, uh, it's great. It's a great place. If you want your children to grow up in a free nation where they can speak their minds and practice their religion and live by their values, then you must defeat Sleepy Joe Biden and the radical left. Okay? Reject left-wing fascism. Vote for American freedom. Vote for America first. Vote for Make America Great Again. But I was thinking, I was thinking on the plane down, I just put this in, I don't know, I just said, and I said to myself, and I said to a group, small group on the plane, the great Mark Meadows is here, do you know Mark? I had to go all the way to North Carolina to find a guy's doing a good job. I don't know where the hell he is. He's always working, I don't know. He's back there someplace. Where is he? There, oh, there, oh, look at, come up, Mark, come up, come up. Come I'll tell you, he has done a really great job. Look at him, central casting too, central casting. He loves his state, I will tell you that. It took me three years to get him out of Congress. And we have another great friend of ours here, Mick Mulvaney. He's really been great. Mick. He's a South Carolina guy. 
And he's a good man, too. And we have some other warriors here. We have some of your congressmen and some others, so we'll introduce them later. The hell with them. We'll introduce them later, right? <laughs> just think of it. Now, I said this to them just a little while ago. I shouldn't say it's sad, because they're going to say he was extremely sad. <laughs> but it is sad. But just think of it, I said. I'm all by myself, and I've had to beat the fake news, lamestream media, and their partner, the Democrat Party. And now we find out, without any doubt, we've had to beat the big tech giants. And add to that, we've had to beat the really stupid, dumb people, the never-Trumpers. Right? We've had to beat the rhinos, that's Republican in name only. Rhino, I love that term, the rhino. Got a lot of rhinos, got more rhinos than we should have. And we had to beat the pundits and the consultants that I've soundly defeated almost every single one of these clowns. You know, they all represented somebody. Don't forget we had 17 people running in the primaries and just about every one of these clowns represented somebody. And I defeated them so badly that they've never gotten over it. They do commercials, they do, these people are sick. They're sick. They're sad, sad people. And on top of everything else, we've had a soundly defeat. We're in the process of doing it. It's much deeper than I thought. The deep staters, right? We had to beat them. It's deeper. You know, the swamp and the swamp creatures are much deeper and much worse than we ever thought. And there is such a thing as the deep state. Who would think? But you know, with all of those people, it's a lot. And I stand here by myself, and then I said to the people in the plane, wonderful, beautiful plane. It's got more television sets than any plane in history. I saw you, I saw this massive, look at the size of this crowd. They're never gonna report that. They never talk about it, you know? They never talk about it. They never talk about it. They never talk about crowd size. You remember when we had the inauguration, I said we had the biggest crowd? And then they show empty space, and they show Barack Hussein Obama's crowd. And I said, I said, why don't we? I think the word we used was audience. That had included all of the new things, you know, the, all of the different things that we have coming out. Every week, there's a new form of information coming out. So I think we had the largest audience anywhere in the world. But they show this field. Now, when I was speaking, it was full. But when they show the field, it was all empty. I said, wait a minute, I was speaking, it was full. Well, they took the pictures about five or six hours early. They had everything roped off. And, you know, I said to my people, we ought to sort of bring that up every once in a while. Oh, sir, nobody cares about it. I care about it. I care about it. No, they took the pictures way early. And when I was speaking, I'm looking at this thing all the way back. It was so beautiful. And then all of a sudden, we made the statement, I guess, the largest audience, and I think it was the largest audience, and we suffered. That was the first week. This was just the beginning. This was just the beginning. But when I was speaking, it was packed, just like this place is packed. Look at that, into the hangar. It's a lot of people. But I had it again, too. I had a guy, I think his name was Weagle, Weigel, Weagle, from the Washington Post. He goes to an arena, and... All of the arenas were packed. Now we're doing outdoor because of COVID, sometimes referred to as the China virus, right? Which I think is a far, which I think is a far more accurate word. I mean, you could also use the corona word, but that sounds like a beautiful town in Italy. It's not fair. Now, this is the China plague or the China virus. That's where it came from. We have to be accurate. And we were really doing well against China. We still are, by the way, but we were doing so well, you know. Hey, do you remember that for years, for 10 years, you heard China was going to supplant us in 2019, right? 2019, they were going to be bigger than us, their economy. Well, that didn't work out too well for them. We were beating them by leaps and bounds, and then we got hit with the plague. No sooner had the ink dried on a great China deal. We made a wonderful trade, you know, deal. It was great. In fact, they ordered the largest amount two weeks ago of corn, soybeans, and beef, cattle, beef, that we've ever had. 
because they want to keep me happy because they know I'm not I'm not satisfied. This is no good what happened. This is no good what they did to us. No good. The ink hadn't even dried on our trade deal with China. Wonderful deal. And this happened. This should have been stopped at China. They should have been able to stop it. They stopped it from going into the rest of China, but they didn't stop it from going into Europe, the United States, and the rest of the world, right? We're going to find out why, too. But the American people are with me, so I stand alone. And I said to these people, I apologize. Do you mind if I said I instead of we? Because it is a group of very loyal people. I said, plays much better when I say I. But we do have a great group of people. But we do. We're standing sort of alone against all of these people. You mean, I mean, I saw Adam Schiff, this guy, the watermelon head. I say, no, he's like a watermelon head. You have, no dummy. No dummy. And he doesn't believe it. But he said the other day about Biden with the laptop from hell. We call it the laptop. He said, and, and he goes up before the mic. This is Adam Schiff, Schiff. This was caused by Russia. Russia. Russia caused this. They created this disinformation, he said. He should be, honestly, that guy should be locked up. And you know, because he's in Congress. You know, because he's, remember when he said, I had this perfect phone call with the president of Ukraine. I'm the only one that could get impeached over a phone call that was perfect. Remember Shifty Schiff got up and he started repeating it. Eight times quid pro quo, and you will this, and you will that, and you will listen. Fortunately, we had beautiful transcribers that transcribed the call. Can you imagine if we didn't have? It would have been my word about against Shifty Schiff and all of the horrible human beings over there. They died when they found out we had a transcription, remember? They wanted to know, how do we get out of this one? So we had to beat that one off, too. But that was a little bit lucky. Thank you to your wonderful transcribers. You did a great job. But you know, this is what we're dealing. We're dealing with some tough people and evil people. Somebody said, President, a friend of mine from New York, very successful guy, big builder, said, President, President, you know, they don't call me Donald anymore. I lost all my friends because everybody, they call me up, they say, oh, it's the President, and it's the President. I pick up, hey, Richard, how you doing, Rich? He goes, Mr. President, sir, how are you? He used to say, hey, Don, how about going out to dinner tonight? It's true, I lost all my friends because they all respect the office. Forget about it. They respect the office of the President. And he'll call me up, he'll say, uh, Mr. President, sir, I've known this guy for so many years. I don't say exactly how many, but too many. Many. Let's put it this way. Many more than 30. So I say, Richard, loosen up. Loosen up. Yes, sir. I say, call me Donald. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're going on, and I say, how's everything going? How's New York? I miss it. It's going to hell with this crazy mayor and this crazy governor we have. Crime is through the roof. Crime in New York is through the roof. And it all happened since I left. I mean, maybe I should take credit for that, that we did a good job. No, but it's very sad what happened. I said, how's it going? We talked. And then he ends it by saying, Mr. President, sir, thank you very much. I said, Richard, you don't have to thank me for speaking to me. And it's one of those things. But they have respect for the office, right? They have respect for the office. And we have to have more respect for our country. When somebody gets up before the halls of Congress, in the halls, so when Schiff gave this phony speech about my conversation, he was quoting my conversation. He didn't know we had it transcribed. And normally I wouldn't do that. We actually called up Ukraine. We said, do you mind if we release it? They said, no, they didn't understand why, but they were nice. You know, they were very nice. I said, do you mind? No. We had our... Secretary of State call, actually. Do you mind? Because it would be nice to let them know we're going to release it, right? It would be very nice. And what happens is it was totally different. And I said, oh, we're going to sue him, and we're going to do things to him because he lied in the halls of Congress. And they told me, you know what they told me? No, sir, I'm sorry. He has total immunity. He can say anything he wants in the halls. That's right. And I thought to myself, isn't that crazy? It should be the exact opposite. You should be mandated to be more honest in the halls of Congress. 
Not where well, you have immunity to say anything you want. Oh, did they die? Did Nancy, did crazy Nancy go crazy when she heard that we had a transcript? She looked at her people. She said, what the hell is this? This is not impeachable. They say, you're right, but we're so far down the road. Let's go for it anyway. This is what we're dealing with. And we won. It's good to win, though, I have to tell you. Winning this. Great Republican support. We had great Republican support. In the House, it was 196 or so to nothing. And we got a Democrat and a half. Van Drew, good guy, running for office, going to do very well. Jeff, he's going to do very well. He came over. He said, this is so corrupt, I'm going to become a Republican. And, and he's going to do great. But it really is. Think of it. When you're in the halls of Congress, you should be more honest instead of where well, you can say anything you want. And that's probably, maybe we should go for it. Let's go for a little change. The radical Biden-Harris agenda is projected to slash the typical American home income by at least $6,500 per year. Think of that. They'll raise your taxes by four. You know, Biden's going to raise your taxes. We could go four trillion. Everyone says, what does that mean? You know what it means? It means a lot. They're going to raise your taxes by four trillion dollars, triggering a mass exodus of jobs out of America and to foreign countries. You know how many jobs I brought in? I brought in jobs that were just stifled because our taxes were so crazy. The Biden tax hikes will wipe out up to another quarter of the small business income and 25 percent of all U.S. investment. Your stocks, your 401ks and pensions will be demolished. You'll go into a depression, the likes of which you haven't seen since 1929. That's what's going to happen. He's going to raise your taxes. He's going to put all the regulations back on. I'm sure he'll join the wonderful Paris Accord. How's it working out for France? I don't think so, right? No, it takes away our wealth. It was meant to take away our wealth. Somebody will come in someday and they'll say, isn't that wonderful? Our air is cleaner than all of them. We just had our best numbers environmentally. The cleanest, the best, without spending fortunes. And it's rigged for China and Russia and India and all these other countries, and it's really bad for us. And everybody said, you know, when I did that, when I got out of the Paris Climate Accord, okay, they call it the Paris. When I got out, such a beautiful name, right? When I got out, the people understood it immediately. I, th I said, this is a tough one. I'm going to get killed in this one. That's okay. Close your eyes, sign it, bomb. But the people got it right away. They're taking your wealth away. They don't want oil. They don't want petroleum. They don't want, you know why? Because they don't have it. And because we do, we are the number one in the world right now. And they want to take it away. <laughs> Biden's plan will destroy 5 million jobs, eliminate $2.6 trillion in wealth, and hurt lower and middle income families the most of all. I will deliver optimism, opportunity, and hope. Biden will deliver pessimism, poverty, and decline. For the last 47 years, Joe Biden has been outsourcing your job, opening your borders. Oh, by the way, our border is closed. That's why you never hear about it. You ever notice you don't hear about that? You don't hear about our vets anymore because we take such good. Remember, every night you'd hear about vets. Before me, 91% approval rating with our vets. Our vets voted 91%. We never had anything like it. And sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless foreign wars in countries that you've never even heard of. And they're all coming back. You know that, right? I mean, I hope anybody, I hope nobody objects. I think 19 years in Afghanistan is enough, wouldn't you say? We're like a police force over there. We have the greatest soldiers in the world, but over there, we're like a police force. 19 years is enough. You think it's easy getting out with all the military-industrial complex, right? Dwight Eisenhower, the military, beware the military-industrial complex. They're right, but we're all coming home. They're all coming home. In 2016, North Carolina voted to fire this depraved political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. <laughs> Joe Biden, as you've been reading for the last four weeks, although it's hard to find because they shut it down, 
You've learned how corrupt the press is more than what I've been saying for four years. I've known it. I've said it, but I don't know how many people believed it. You see how corrupt they are when the New York Times and the Washington Post and all of these other, they don't even write about a man who is a totally corrupt politician. He's a corrupt politician. In addition, he let communist China plunder your jobs while his family raked in millions from China and foreign nations. Think of it. How about Russia? How about Russia? Three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife. Three and a half. Oh, I see. What did you do for that? There's a lot. That's like one of the smaller hits. He was like a vacuum cleaner. You know, they go into a country. It was like having a vacuum cleaner. Just suck it all in. And if you mention it, it's if you mention it, and I take, I have great respect for the New York Post. The New York Post, fourth largest newspaper, the oldest. Is, but the New York Post, what they've done is incredible. But you know, the big tech, they put you out. Twitter, they take you out. Charlie Kirk, so many people, they take them out. They take them out. They say, we're not going to stand for this. If you call them corrupt, they'll say, we're not going to stand because that's where they're coming from. Think of what's happening. Nobody thought, does everyone know what I'm talking about? Nobody thought it was even possible. And the newspaper, or news, you know, all the news that's fit to print. Actually, it's all the news that's not fit to print because they don't want to print it. They don't want to put it in. I mean, it is disgraceful. We talk about freedom of the press. This is the exact opposite of freedom of the press. They don't want to put the word out. And even me, I make a speech like this. They'll turn off. Look, I'll bet you the cameras turn off because they don't want it. Nobody, even me, I'm the big cynic of the world. I never thought this was possible. His so-called Biden Center at the University of Pennsylvania has already received $70 million from China. $70 million. That can't be possible. Is that possible? Explosive emails from Hunter Biden also show that Hunter was negotiating with a Chinese firm tied to the Communist China Party to receive $10 million a year for introductions. Well, that sounds reasonable. I think you'd do that. I think I'd even do it. $10 million to introduce. Hey, I'd like to introduce you. Send me the $10 million. Another email referenced 10% held by Hunter for the big guy. I wonder who the big guy was. The big guy. He doesn't look so big to me. He doesn't look so big when he walks on the stage. He's not looking too strong. Fragile, very fragile. But the big guy, they call him the big guy. One document shows a plan to take money from Chinese state-owned enterprises. This, I'll tell you what, this laptop is a disaster for that. How the hell did he ever let go of this sucker? You know? He put it to a, he got to have it fixed. I guess he forgot to pick it up. What the hell? And then shift, that's where he bled. He said, it's Russia did it. It's Russia. Russia. Oh, Russia. They probably think we are the wackiest people. He said, what did we do now? He created a laptop for Hunter Biden with pictures and all. This is a matter of national security. The Bidens got rich. Well, North Carolina and our country got robbed, okay? If Biden wins, China will own the United States. Will own it. The media and the big tech are desperately trying to cover up this massive scandal. I'm not just running against sleepy Joe Biden. I'm running against the corrupt media. They're corrupt. The corrupt media, the big tech giants, and I'm running against the Washington swamp. It's time to send a message to these wealthy liberal hypocrites by delivering Joe Biden a thundering defeat on November 3rd. That's a lot of people. This is a big crowd. By the way, this is a big crowd. You should have seen the people on the road. They couldn't get in. You know, as big as this crowd is, tens of thousands of people on the roads coming up, they couldn't get in. Couldn't get in. They said, uh, how big is your arena? I said, I don't know. We have a big field. Oh, good. I said, it's sold out. How do you sell out a field, right? They said, sir, I'm sorry. We can't let anyone else in. The police, they're great, by the way. 
I said, officer, we have 10,000 people out there, much more than that, all the way down. He said, I'm sorry, sir. I said, it's a field. Just let's open it up. Let's move the trucks back, the buses, everything. And he said, sir, we have a problem. What? Stampede. I said, stampede. He said, we got so many people, we're worried about it. I thought that was for cattle, right? He said, stampede. Now, can you imagine? Now, Joe doesn't have that problem. He has about four or five circles. They can't fill them up. But I love the people. The only thing I like about him is the person that does the circles after this is all over. No, they do a beautiful job. Nice, wide, beautiful, everything. You know, I'm a perfectionist. It's beautiful, those circles. They're very far away from each other. You couldn't catch COVID in those circles, no matter what you did. So if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. The only thing we do to make them totally crazy is we say 12 more years because it trust us. Right? Then they say, see, he is a fascist. Ah, oh, they've covered me. They've covered me every way. They've said, he is so stupid. Then they say, he's not really smart. Then they say, He's trying to take over the entire country. Then they say, no, 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 no. He's a super genius. He's more brilliant than every greatest ever. He's trying to take over the entire world. So I go from not being smart to being the smartest person in history, but evil. Someday they're going to say, you know what? He was a smart guy, ran a great country. Okay, that's what we want. It's this country. It's this country. You no, know, they've had every, they've called me everything in the book. They've called me names that you wouldn't believe. And we just keep going along, right? Because nobody's been able to do what we've done in the first three and a half years. Nobody even close. Nobody. So if I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you harder than anybody has ever fought for you before. Nobody's ever fought for you. You think this is easy? All these women, 61. This is number 61 times. These incredible women right here. They're rich as hell. I said to them, I saw them two weeks ago, I said, also in North Carolina, but a long ways away from here, right? It's a big state. But I saw them two weeks ago. I said, how many times have you been here? They said, 60 at the time. I said, because I've seen them. I said, do your husbands have a problem with that? I think your husbands are with you tonight. Stand up, husbands, please. Stand up. Look at these guys. Handsome, very handsome, good-looking guys. How about the women standing up? Would you stand up, please? Look at that. Great people. These are great people. These are great Americans. These are really great American people. These are great American people that we love. One of the most important issues in this election is the safety of the American family. The Biden-Harris war on police would be a catastrophe for our nation. Just look at what the left has done in Democrat-run Chicago, Portland, New York City, Oakland, name any, Baltimore. Did you hear what happened? You know, Obama's now campaigning. Even though he refused to support Biden, I mean, he'd never, and then even after Biden sort of semi won, he said, my one, he wouldn't do it. He just, it took forever. But now he's campaigning for him. And somebody said, sir, uh, maybe this isn't good. What's wrong? President Obama's campaigning for Sleepy Joe Biden. And I said, ha, huh, that's good news or bad news? Tell me, are you saying it's good or it's bad? Well, I guess it's bad. No, it's good. There was nobody that campaigned harder for crooked Hillary Clinton than Obama, right? He was all over the place. He said, he will not be our president. But before that, he said, he will not run. He didn't know me. Then I ran. Then he said, he will not get the nomination. 
and he got the nomination. Then he said, he will not be our president. Then I won. I think the only one, the only one more unhappy than crooked Hillary that night was Barack Hussein Obama. The only one. Barack Hussein Obama. You know, when I say that name, I think of a man who is an incredible man, who's having difficulty, but there is nobody more brave. And he would talk a lot about Barack Obama. He would talk about Obama all the time. I wouldn't say in the most positive way, but with respect. Rush Limbaugh, he's great. Rush Limbaugh. And you talk about a fighter, he's frightened. He is a fighter. You never saw a fighter like Rush. And he got the presidential, you know, he got our, our greatest, our greatest award. He got the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest that and the Congressional Medal of Honor. And uh, it was a great evening, and there's a fantastic wife and family. But Rush is having a hard time, and I will tell you something. He is something special. Try talking for years and years, biggest audience in radio history, try talking for three hours Without phone calls, without, you know, it's easy. Pick up a phone, hey, how you doing on Social Security? You give, he would just talk and talk and talk. Biggest audience ever. Sean Hannity thinks one of the greats ever in anything, one of the greats. Mark Levin, Laura. Tucker's been getting better and better all the time, right? Getting better all the time. The great Lou Dobbs, right? Great Lou Dobbs. Lou Dobbs has been great. Lou Dobbs has been great. No, we have a lot of we have a lot of great people, and we're getting more and more. It's very interesting, getting more. But I just want to pay my absolute respect. He's in there fighting, and I'll tell you what, uh, nobody can do it like him. Rush Limbaugh, okay? <laughs> Biden and Harris's anti-police rhetoric is inciting riots and putting our police in grave danger. You know, I watched this guy today, and he's talking about how it was so calm. Well, it wasn't calm. Ferguson, St. Louis, Baltimore, right? Oakland. They had things going on that was, were worse. I mean, you look at Baltimore. Remember that whole mess? But now it's like, oh, they were so wonderful. And then you look at the H1N1 that Joe calls the opposite, the swine flu. You look at that. And you say, well, wait a minute, that was handled so badly. And the person that was running his whole thing said, this was handled so badly, you have no idea how badly it was run. And then they criticize us. He says, I didn't close up soon enough. But he was two months late, and he was criticizing me for closing up too soon. So, you know, it always gets me when somebody's in office for 47 years. He could have done a lot. How much? He said, more. <laughs> he could have. Barely in office, right? But all you have to do is you have to say, well, why didn't you do it? I always say that. Why didn't you do it? Don't complain. Get it done. We get it done. Nobody has done more in three and a half years. But I will always stand because they don't. They don't. They want to disassociate, they want to disassociate themselves. I will always stand with the men and women of law enforcement. Biden is also pledging. Mass amnesty and free federal health care for illegal aliens. And we all have a heart. It will obliterate Medicare and Social Security with that. But we all have a heart. The problem, I want to take care of everybody. The problem is our country will be flooded with tens of millions of people. Free health care, free education. I always say for them, it drives them crazy. Everybody gets a free Rolls Royce, and then they say, I am misrepresenting. They don't get a Rolls Royce. But no, but think of it, free health care. And I'll always protect, I will always protect your Medicare and your Social Security. It will never be protected. Again. And I'm also proud that here in North Carolina, your Medicare Advantage premiums have decreased because of us, because of good management, by over 44% since I took office. When you hear that, you don't hear that too often. On health care, we're providing American families with affordable, high-quality, personalized health care. The Washington Democrats want bureaucrats calling the shots, rationing care, and deciding who gets treatment. The Battle of the China Virus, we launched the largest mobilization since World War II. It's incredible. What we've done 
and we've helped out a lot of governors. We've made a lot of really bad governors look good, and we've made some good ones look great. And I can tell you, we've got some bad ones and we have some really good ones, and I'll someday tell you who it is. Our early and aggressive action saved more than two million lives. I took rapid action to ban travel from China and Europe, and Biden opposed both. Remember, they're highly infected. I said, we got to stop it. We pioneered incredible therapies. Excuse me, here I am. Here I am. I don't know what the hell it was. All I know, I got it. And I have to, look, as president, I can't stay in the basement of the White House. I really can't. I have to meet, I meet with families, Gold Star families. I meet with so many people, heads of state. I meet with all these people. Sometimes I'll leave and I'll say, man, that's dangerous. If, if you, you know, if you're really into, I start thinking, I say, you know, I'm meeting with so many people, but I can't stay in a basement or I can't stay in a beautiful bedroom in the White House where I say, hello world, let me stay here for a year. I can't do that with the first lady. If I have to choose somebody, I'll choose the first lady. But, oh, but I can't, they do love Melania, it's true. But I can't, I can't just stay inside and do that. And it's risky, and I caught it. And I didn't feel too good. And I was surrounded by doctors. I've never seen so many doctors in my life, you know? I was always well taken care of, but I've never seen, I mean, every doctor from every major place in the world, Johns Hopkins was great. Johns Hopkins was really fantastic. And, you know, Walter Reed is unbelievable. But I had 12 doctors standing around my bed. And every one of them had a hand on a different part of my body. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But I didn't feel, go I didn't feel good. And they gave me what's called Regeneron, which is antibodies, very strong antibodies. And there is other, Eli Lilly makes something. I mean, it's incredible. What they're doing, by the way, what they're doing now is incredible. And I don't know, maybe it was great, maybe it, maybe it would have happened anyway, but I woke up the next morning and I felt like Superman. <laughs> I felt like Superman, Regeneron. And I'm working to make the same antibody treatment that I received available to anybody that needs it free. We're getting it approved. We're getting it. We're signing what's called emergency use declaration. We're getting it because it's so new. It's not even really approved. It's almost like right to try. You know, I got right to try, right? For people that are sick. And they'd have to travel to other parts of the world, or if they didn't have money, they'd have to go home and die. Even if we had something that looked good, but it wasn't approved by the FDA, we cut those times way down anyway from, I mean, half. We cut them in half. But still, has to be approved. And we got right to try done, and that's where somebody, there's a drug that has potential, and somebody's dying, terminally ill. And they couldn't do it because they said, well, supposing they die, they're going to die anyway. And we got, but still not easy because the insurance companies had very deep problems and the drug companies had problems. They didn't want them on the list. And there were a lot of different things. And the country had problems because the country doesn't want to get sued by everybody if it doesn't work out. And so I have them sign now. We wrote up a very sophisticated but simple agreement that somebody taking any of the new, really incredible medicines, we're the greatest labs and doctors in the world, anybody taking it will sign away their rights. They're not going to sue anybody. And you know what's happened? We have had more success with Right to Try. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's really incredible. It's a great thing. That's one of so many things we've done. We have done so many things. I could go on all night about the things we've done, but you'd start saying, well, you know, he's done a great job, but let's get the hell out of here, Harry. And we will have 100 million vaccine doses before the end of this year, okay? And if you look, cases in Europe are surging. You know, they don't talk about that. They're always saying, Europe, Europe, Europe. Well, sorry, but they're surging. I don't want that to happen, but cases in Europe are surging. Biden's lockdown would reduce life expectancy. You know, when you do these lockdowns, like you are suffering through in North Carolina, you have a governor, depression, suicide, drugs, alcohol, and many other problems. And your kids want to go to school. They want to go. They have to go to school. So I want to send a message tonight to America's incredible moms. The moms are heroes. They really are. They're heroes. And they know better than anyone that their children do belong in school. And they want their children to go back 
to school. I will open your schools. Biden will close your schools. And he'll keep them closed. I mean, these people, it's like crazy what's going on. It's, I don't get it. Maybe, maybe it will be right after, you know, the election's going to end. Hopefully, we're going to win. And, and then these governors will just say, oh, they'll go like this. Oh, just open the place up. No, the state's closed, and so many, I mean, you have five of But see, they think that's going to give us worse numbers. So here's a number you have to watch out. GDP, it's going to be announced two days before the election. November 3rd, it's going to be announced like on November 1st. Just watch it. I think it's going to sit. I don't know anything, by the way. This is for the media. No, I don't have any inside information. But the Atlanta Fed came out today, and they gave a number that's one of the most incredible numbers anyone's ever heard. Many times what the all-time record would be. Uh, they said GDP will increase in this third quarter by 35%. 35%. People were hearing 20. People were hearing 20. But here's the problem. Now, if it goes 25 or 30, they'll say, Donald Trump failed to meet. I mean, I think the highest is probably eight, seven, six, eight, something, nine. Uh, but, but they said, they said, they predicted 35%. So if it was 20%, it would be incredible. That would be double, triple what the highest in history was. But this is a number that, because we're doing great. But the Democrats think by keeping North Carolina closed and Pennsylvania, we love Pennsylvania closed, and by keeping Michigan closed, this governor that's always blaming everybody for everything, by keeping, except her husband, by keeping, it's true, by keeping Michigan closed. And all of this, that it'll affect the number. Well, the number's going to be great anyway. They got to open up California. We got to open up California. I see what's going on. People are leaving California. They're leaving New York because they can't take it. Number one, they have the basic problems, high taxes, crime. But on top of it, they can't even open. It's a very sad thing, and they're killing. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know what they're doing. But they have to open these states up, and your governor has to open your state up. And this is brilliant, brilliant timing. Well, this is great timing, because I just see. We're joined tonight by your Lieutenant Governor, Dan Forrest. All right. Dan, you better come up here. Come on. Let's get this guy up. Okay. Where is Dan? Yeah, come on, Dan. Look at him. He's a handsome guy. Don't worry. He's locked in. Secret Service will get Take your time. We're also joined by South Carolina Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett. Pamela, where's Pamela? Thank you, Pamela. Wow, so, so young and so strong and so smart. Good, you're doing a fantastic job. Say hello to the governor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Pamela. Come up here, Dan. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome to North Carolina. Another Gastonia. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. President, it's great to have you back in the great state of North Carolina. You can see with all these tens of thousands of people here that North Carolina loves you. And North Carolina is going to vote for Donald J. Trump one more time in November. Mr. President, we have a couple things in common here. Our opponents are both stuck in their basement for the last 200 days. They've, uh, they both have the same philosophy. Uh, their, their job is to destroy instead of build up. We both come from a business background, Mr. President, and I'm going to work with you to make North Carolina great again, and we're going to work to make America great again. So Donald J. Trump, President Trump has done more for the United States of America in the last 46 months than Joe Biden has done in the last 46 years. And we don't need a, we don't need a do-nothing president in America. We need a president that gets things done. Here in North Carolina, we have a do-nothing governor. For four years, we have a governor who's done absolutely nothing except for shut our state down, shut our schools down, close our economy down, and destroy one of the greatest economies the United States of America has ever seen. 
So my friends, join with me over the next 13 days to vote Republican, vote Donald J. Trump, and vote Dan Forrest for governor. God bless you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. He'll be a great governor. Hey, Dan, you're making a lot of progress. I see the polls are very close, Dan. They're getting a little bit nervous. They're getting a little nervous about you. A friend of mine from the beginning, she's always been with me, and just a fantastic woman, Virginia Fox, Congresswoman. Congresswoman. She walks into a room, and those congressmen, they shake and they quake. Right? That's true. Another friend of mine who uh, we were involved with right at the beginning, he showed incredible courage and stamina. The race was a tough race. He's got another one coming up now, and I hope everybody's going to be with him. He's turned out to be a great congressman. Dan Bishop. Dan. Dan. Dan Bishop. Thank you, Dan. Great job. A lot of courage. And also, a warrior friend really helps out. Whenever we need it, he's there. Ted Budd. Ted. Great Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Dan. North Carolina GOP Chair Michael Watley. Hi, Michael. And we're doing well. Ah, oh, that's good, Michael. We're going to win this state, I would think. Oh, I'll tell you. You know, those votes are all sort of coming in, and some aren't coming in like they thought. They're going a little bit. They're going a little crazy, Michael. They're a little bit concerned about what's happening, aren't they? Huh? Not only here, a lot of other states, too. Press just refuses to report it, but eventually they have to. Because, you know, at some point you win, and then they say, okay. Remember last time, right, four years ago? Remember the hand of King, John King? He was sort of like, I haven't seen him lately. Did he get fired or something? I think one of their lawyers just got fired. No, just got fired. For a good reason. Well, he hasn't been too nice to us, let's face it. That was a strange deal going on. No, but remember the, uh, remember four years ago, the thing, his hand looked very brave. Oh, this is going to be very, this is going to be over very quick. And about, Four hours later, the hand was, the hand started to shake. And then he said, uh, I can't believe what's happening, but we could believe it. We know it. And we know what's happening again. We know what's happening again, except more so. This is now happening again, Michael, except more so. You were there. Is this more than four years ago? Yeah. No, there's more enthusiasm. There's more enthusiasm. There's more support. No, this is even more so, I think, Michael. You better win, Michael. I will fire you so fast. And two friends of mine, I'll tell you what, these people, my wife called, she said, I just have to come over. She was in New York, and she came in. She said, you have to see, and she brought a clip. She said, you have to see this. These two people are great. They're great. This is four years ago, and it was Diamond and Silk. Are they here? Good. Look at them. Look at them. No, it's true. First lady came in. She said, you got to take a look at this being. And she pressed. I said, that's amazing. They are great. Thank you very much. Right from the beginning, right? You understood long before a lot of other people. You understood. You got it. They're also doing really well for themselves, and I'm happy. I said, go out and do well, right? Thank you. Thank you. Great honor. Thank you. Great people. Thanks also to your senator, Tom Tillis, who whose opponent had an unexpected problem times two. Now, Tom's a good guy. Tom's been with us. He's been uh, Working hard, he's respected very much in Washington. He's really a, a good, he's really a good senator, really a good senator. And he's been, uh, he's been strong. So I hope he gets in. I hope you guys going to go out and get him in. He's terrific. But he really did, you know, he had a uh, little duck. 
But we wouldn't call it luck. It's, uh, you know, it's an unfortunate situation in many ways. So we'll see how it all turns out. But it's a close race. It's going to be a tough race. But uh, our race doesn't look like it's going to be as close. Our race looks like it's going pretty well. And with us as well are members of the incredible Lumbi Katawa tribes. Lumbi Katawa. Where are they? Oh, look at you guys. Wow. Wow. That's a good looking group of people. Lumbi Katawa. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. And we're working with you, and you have a great congressman in Dan. You know that, right? Right, Dan? I'll tell you, you're lucky you have Dan. <laughs> nah, he's a, he's a big supporter. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. As you know, the Lumbee tribe has been fighting for federal recognition for more than a century. That's all? Well, you're moving faster than a lot of people move. That's a long time. When I am reelected, we'll work with Congress, and we'll work with Dan, and we'll work with all of them on the Lumbee Recognition Act, and we'll get it done. Okay? It's about time. And I notice you do have great support within the state. You have Dan, but you have great support within the state, so that's great. We'll work on that very strongly. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Under my administration, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world, and now we are doing it again. In my first three years, we increased family income over $6,000 and much more when you include energy, because, you know, these people want to wipe out your energy. We're energy independent. They want to wipe it out. Who ever thought you'd be paying $2 for gasoline, sometimes less? You know, that's like, that's like a big tax cut. That's more than five times the gains in all eight years under the Obama administration. Think of that. In three years versus eight years, medium income range and reached Wow, $69,000. That's good. That's good. That's an all-time, that's an all-time high. Income for black Americans grew nine times. Think of that. It grew nine times more under my leadership than under Biden and Obama. Grew nine times more, much shorter period of time. African-American unemployment, Hispanic-American unemployment, and Asian-American unemployment all reached their lowest levels in the history of our country. Women's unemployment reached the lowest rate in more than 70 years. We lifted nearly 7 million Americans out of poverty, including nearly 1.2 million African-Americans lifted out of poverty. Think of that. Nobody's done this. These are all records. When the virus hit, we experienced the smallest contraction of any major country anywhere in the world. And we also are now witnessing, by far, the fastest recovery. We're recovering faster than any time. And you'll see what that number is. Let's see what it is. And I don't know, 35, but it's going to be a great number. Since April, we created a record 11.4 million jobs. Never done that before. Under Biden, it took 30 months to recover more than half of the jobs lost in the crisis. We did it in five months. Think of that. But we've spent the last four years reversing the damage Joe Biden inflicted over the last 47 years. He supported NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made. TPP would have been the worst trade deal ever made, would have been even worse, but I didn't let it go through. And China's entry into the World Trade Organization, one of the worst things ever to happen to this country. He betrayed, quite honestly, the American worker. That's what he did. And he always has. He always has. Now he's saying, we have to protect America. We have to protect. We have to hire. He says, we have to hire. He copied me. We have to hire American, he says. I said, he copied me. Get a new phrase. He's not doing anything. He didn't do it for years. And forget the 47. You know, it wasn't like they were out long, right? He didn't do any of this stuff when they were there. He also voted for the war in Iraq. Terrible decision. For decades, our politicians spent trillions and trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders 
But now we are finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities, and we are bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back home to the USA where they belong. And I'm also taking care of North Carolina tobacco growers. Is that okay? Yes? North Carolina tobacco growers. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history by far. My opponent's insane immigration plan would be a nightmare for North Carolina families. He would eliminate U.S. borders by implementing nationwide catch and release. We ended catch and release. That's when you catch somebody. Could be a murderer, could be a rapist, could be a criminal of some kind. And you let them free and say, excuse me, come back in four years. We're going to give you a trial. Nobody ever comes back. Who would come back? Only a very stupid person would come back. So it's catch and release. I ended that. You think that was easy to end that? It was not easy. It was not easy. Sounds easy, but it wasn't. It's ended. And he wants to make every community into a sanctuary city for violent criminals. No, thank you. The Biden-Harris plan. And you've had a lot of problems with your sanctuary cities, and you've had a lot of crime because of your — and a lot of death with your sanctuary cities and city. The Biden-Harris plan would also increase refugees 700 percent from the most dangerous places in the world. That was done with Crazy Bernie, right? That was the manifesto. I call it the manifesto. They agreed to this 700 percent increase. They pledged to terminate all national security travel bans, which I got. I got a travel ban. Remember, they said you'd never get it approved. I got it approved. And now if somebody hates us, if they hate us from a different part of the world, we say, I'm sorry, you cannot come in. That makes sense, doesn't it? They'll open the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. The beheading that took place in France just a few days ago is a horrifying reminder that we have to be vigilant. And I sent our regards and our sympathies to France and to their president, Macron, who's a uh, terrific guy. He's working very hard. I'm keeping the terrorists, jihadists, and violent extremists the hell out of our country, if that's okay with you. And I will never say it, because it's not good to say it, and I'm knocking on nice, beautiful wood, because I can tell it's ours, because it's — they spend a lot of money on building these things. But you haven't seen too much happening on that front, have you, huh? You notice? Okay. Well, keep your eyes — hey, keep your eyes open, okay? Keep your eyes open, because they'd love to do something. Just keep your eyes open. But there's a reason for things not happening also. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military. And as you all know, defense spending in North Carolina has soared. Made in the USA. All made in the USA. And for our great veterans, we passed VA choice and VA accountability. Nobody thought that was ever going to happen. We killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. And we took out the mass murder of American troops. Soleimani is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. One — how about this? $150 billion for nothing. And don't forget, $1.8 billion in cash. In Many airplanes loaded up with cash. I recognized the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Fifty-two years they worked on that. We got it done in two hours. Fifty-two years. And instead of never-ending wars, we are forging peace in the Middle East without blood all over the sand. Just signed up another country today. Iran doesn't want to let me win. China doesn't want to let me win. They want me to be defeated so badly. And the swamp doesn't want to let me win, because I am fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. The first call I'll get after we win, the first call I'll get will be from Iran saying, let's make a deal. 
Because you talk about an economy, their economy, GDP down 27 percent. Nobody's ever even heard of it. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and a limitless future for all Americans. So in conclusion, we're all about the American dream. You know, we're about the American dream. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. We have to say that. Honest Dave. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. It's already happening. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms, Second Amendment. And remember, Joe Biden is going to take away your Second Amendment. You're going to take it away. Don't even think about it. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our cities, and we will keep America out of these ridiculous, absolutely crazy foreign wars. We will do it. Countries you've never even heard of. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. That's what we have right now. And the equipment that we built is the greatest anywhere in the world. Russia, China, North Korea, everybody. We are the envy. Nobody has equipment like us. Missiles, rockets, tanks, submarines, ships, Fighter jets, beautiful, beautiful, the best stuff anywhere in the world. Hydrosonic missiles, seven times faster than anything else. Seven times. They go rather quickly. And we've totally redone our nuclear. And hope to God, all of it, hope to God we never have to use any of it. That's all. But, you know, because it's now redone, you know, remember I got here and a highly overrated general said, sir, we have no ammunition. I said, that should never happen to a president again. But hope to God, this equipment never has to be used. But nobody has it like us. And you know, the reason it may never be used is because we have it. If we didn't have it, we may have very big problems. We could have had very big problems. We got it done. Made in the USA. We will end surprise medical billing. Require price transparency. Already done, already signed. Kicks in on January 1st. That's a big thing. That's going to be bigger. Price, please remember, price transparency, bigger than health care. Wait till you see this. A lot of people aren't too happy with what I did there. Further reduce the cost of prescription drugs. Favorite nations, we're going to get the lowest in the world. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Always. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of North Carolina. Standing up for North Carolina. But we have the most important election in our history. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, Get your co-workers, get your boss, rip them out of the seat. And get out and vote. Got to get out and vote.
From Asheville, we'll be there soon, to Charlotte, from Wilmington to Raleigh, and from Greensboro to right here in Gastonia. We stand on the shoulders of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their heart, sweat, and soul to secure our liberty and defend our freedom. Our brave American ancestors crossed the oceans, blazed the trail, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, dug out the Panama Canal, laid down the railroads, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. And you haven't seen anything yet. Proud citizens like you help build this country. And together, we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. That's what happened four years ago. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of North Carolina, we have made America powerful again, our military. We have made America wealthy again, our stock market, your 401ks. Your 401ks are booming. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, North Carolina. Go out and vote. Thank you. Go and vote. Thank you very much.